Web Systems Week 6 Operating Systems Part 2 Resource Management Just a recollection of what the web is. A web runs on a network and runs on a great big whacking distributed system which is running on an operating system. And our operating system runs processes and it provides resources to these processes which is what we'll cover today. As you recall, processes are programs in execution. And the operating system loads this program to memory and it executes a process until it's waiting or blocked. And when it's blocked, typically it's waiting for some resource. Just a quick definition of what a resource is. A resource are things that processes might need. For example, files or data, it might need network information, it might need interaction to humans or a mice keyboard display or something like that. There's a special set of resources handled by the kernel or the core of the operating system. For example, these mysterious things called interrupts or input-output interfaces or system devices. These are resources as well. Remember the kernel runs the main initial process called init and they might actually use these resources. Many of these resources require what we call mutually exclusive access. In other words, only one thing can use that resource at the same time. This can result in a thing called resource contention, which I'll talk about in a moment. So let's take a look at resource contention. We're going to try to read a file. For example, a file, process 1, process 2, might execute at the same time. And they want the same file. What happens then? If process 1 tries to access the file, at the same time process 2 is accessing the file, neither process can run because they're going to have a situation called resource contention. And this is called a deadlock. Two processes can't run because they need the common file. So one way around this is to, to basically limit access to this file using a thing called a semaphore. Basically it's a flag, like a tick box. Yes, I've got it. No, I don't have it. Or a lock file, which basically says I cannot access this file. I cannot access this file unless I hold the key. In computer science, a very common way of describing a deadlock is called the dining philosopher's problem. I've actually modified this slide because they use forks and everybody knows you can eat spaghetti with one fork. Here's the problem. A number of philosophers are sitting around the table eating noodles. In order to eat noodles, you need two chopsticks. But there's only five philosophers and there's only five chopsticks. That's not good news. So if each philosopher tries to pick up his chopstick to his left, this guy picks up the other guy's chopstick, the other guy's chopstick, the other guy's chopstick, the other guy's chopstick. What happens here? You get a little circular loop occurring. And what happens? Nobody can actually access the second chopstick, which is not good news, which means they all wait forever. And hypothetically, in a real computer science situation, they all die of starvation. This is called a classical deadlock situation. And you've probably seen deadlocks a few times. You may not know it. So a few things about the conditions for a deadlock. Number one, limited number of resources. In other words, you don't have an infinite number of files to access. Typically, it's one. Sometimes the process has to wait for the resource. So I need this resource. It could be, for example, the mouse. I need to use the mouse for a game. If that resource never gets released, then you have that circular situation happening. One process is waiting for a file, the other process is waiting for a file. Neither process gets to run. It's called a deadlock. Good example, if you're trying to edit the same file at the same time. And I think many of you have seen that by pressing Ctrl Z on VI. A few more conditions that cause deadlock. Mutual exclusion. You can only have one 
process access that resource at a time. And the other one is, if the process is waiting for one resource and another process is waiting for another resource that both need. Good example, process A wants a file number one and process B wants a file called number two. And let's say number A wants process two, a uh, file two, and process B wants file one. It's a mutual standoff situation. A and B A and B can't run because they both hold each other's mutual files. That's another good example of what happens. So how do you deal with these deadlocks? Well, duh, try to avoid it. Classic situation. So operating systems will try their best to make sure resources are not shared. Um, the other way to do it is to detect it. Allow the deadlocks to happen, and all you have to do is break them. And this is often done by a thing called a watchdog. A watchdog, which is simply a special process whose job is to look for these deadlocks and to break them. Ultimately, you'll often see it sometimes happening when you get a hang or the dreaded blue screen of death where the kernel itself often hits a deadlock and dies, which is not good news. This blue screen of death actually is a form of detection of some kind. You may get little screens pop up windows as well that says files not responding, a pro um, programs not responding. It's another classic case. A watchdog is that pop-up that allows you to cancel it. So that's a simple example of resource usage in an operating system. One thing you have to think about, in addition to all these concepts of process starting processes and resource management, what happens when you have a gigantic distributed system? In a classic case is what I call Google scale computing. A million plus computers, but running as if it was one, a Googleplex or a cluster. Your process scheduling needs far more than just resources within a computer. It's got resources between computers. It gets very very, very confusing. And uh, the world's not even going to be simple. It's getting much, much harder to deal with these things. We're getting a convergence between distributed computing, networking, and web design. New technologies are coming out. For example, cloud computing, like Amazon or Google, cloud computing. A new concept you can look up as well, Wikipedia if you can, software-defined networking where our networks have to cope with new types of ways of communicating with each other. And what about the Internet of Things? You literally could have trillions of devices, all based on IP version 6 or something like that. It gets extremely more complicated. So I'll leave you with this to think about that. How would an operating system be developed to deal with literally millions of inputs, millions of resources, with virtually no memory? So today we learned about resources, how they cause deadlocks, and how we can fix it or resolve it.